So today we are going to be talking about the canzona by Pergolesi, who was an Italian composer who wrote a lot for vocal pieces, but also for instrumentalists because he was a violinist as well. Now the canzona basically means a song-like piece. Um, so it's not for a singer. It doesn't have any text originally for it. It was actually originally for an instrument, but it sounds like a tune. It's melodic and almost could be sung as if there was text that you could put to it, even though it wasn't originally written that way. So this is great because when we've got this wonderful melody, da 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 it's very catchy. But there's also some parts about this piece which is very noodly. What does that mean? So when I say noodly, essentially what it means is it hovers around a particular set of notes and just keeps going back and forth between them. So eventually kind of creating a little shape of like a, a noodle. Um, and so for this, it can get a little tedious because you have to do it in this case for three measures. Um, and then it repeats again later, but of course a different, a different grouping of notes. So then you have to relearn it for that. Um, so it just keeps covering around it and you want to make sure your fingers know exactly where to go because you have to do it for three measures straight and it's very easy to fumble around this. So in order not to fumble and to get your fingers really super solid and understanding where they need to be, we're going to focus today on just one technique, one concept. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it does help you kind of process this. And this is a practicing technique. It's called the seven rhythms. Okay. So we're going to jump right into how you would approach this. It's a rhythmic bass exercise. It's going to really help you approach and memorize uh, where your fingers need to go. So I'm going to start at measure 24 to play the original. <laughs> Noodly, right? And over and over again. So how do you practice this? Well, you would take out the original rhythm and you're going to put it off to the side for a second. You're going to pretend that there, there isn't an actual rhythm for this yet. And now we're going to instill our own rhythms um, based on this particular or, or organization of the seven rhythm exercise. So the first rhythm you're going to try out is a long, short, long, short rhythm, which essentially means you're lengthening the first and third note of each grouping and shortening the second and fourth. In this case, you're lengthening all the B flats. So you're just gonna hold them a little bit longer. I'm gonna slow it down so you can really hear it. It's also could be referred to as a dotted rhythm, but really the important factor is just the, the long, short, long, short, long. Cool, that's rhythm number one. Practice it. When you feel comfortable, then we have rhythm number two, which is you flip it around. So rather than long short, it's short long. 
So rather than holding the B flats, now you're holding the other notes. So you're holding the C's and the A's and you're shortening the B flats. <laughs> short, long, short, long. Wonderful. Practice it until it feels comfortable. Now we're on to the third rhythm. Now, the first two rhythms were groups of two. So right, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long. Great. That fits in really nicely into this 16th note rhythm where there's, there's larger groupings of four. The next two rhythms are focused around the groups of three, which don't fit very nicely into groups of four. So rather than just being able to focus on one little thing at a time, we have to start stringing them together. And this is becomes the real brain teaser, so to speak, the tongue twister of your, of your mind, trying to get your head around this. So listen very carefully. So the first one, again, based on longs and shorts, is long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. Okay? So groupings of threes, make sure to lengthen every third note. <laughs> You start to hear a pattern once you play it long enough, but it takes a little while for it to click in. That's the third one. And then you guessed it. For the fourth one, you flip it. So instead of long, short, short, it's short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. All right. So now that we've got those four down, practice it. Those are the first four. The next one is also a grouping of three, but a slightly different one. We're going to make it all equal, but because we don't want to make it too easy, we want to challenge our brain since this is a technique twister, we're going to turn it into triplets. Okay. So again, we have to string them all together for it to make sense, but think of the triple it, triple it feature. <laughs> to really feel the three feel, go for it. So that's the fifth one. That's triplets. Awesome. The next one, number six, is what I would like to say the question mark, the unknown one. This is one you get to be a little creative and you get to make up your own rhythm. Okay. We've done groupings of twos. We've done groupings of threes. So I often challenge students to try to do a grouping of four or five. Maybe you can make the inter into, uh, inside ones a little bit shorter. So if I was doing a group of four, I could go long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, something like. <laughs> something along those lines. So it's up to you. Have fun. Get creative. The last note, the last exercise in the grouping of sevens is the the original one. So what was the original rhythm? Because let's be honest, this one's straightforward 16th notes, but if we're doing this exercise and it's already dotted, um, we would be taking that away and replacing it with one of these regular ones instead. So it, it's a little flexible, but in this case, we're going back to the original straightforward 16th notes. <laughs> brain just went through a whole bunch of dotted rhythms, triplets, maybe quintuplets and other things, that is going to seem so much easier now because your brain just has to read straight 16th notes. And now your fingers will have gotten so used to going back and forth between the certain notes that it needs to play that it just reads it fine. So that's a seven rhythm exercise. There's a quick review. It's the long, short, short, long, long, short, 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 long, Triplets, question mark, because number six, you make it up. I would recommend doing something in a grouping of four or five. And then the last one is the original rhythm. Okay, so that's the seven exercise that I like to play around with when I'm trying to figure out a longer passage, get it under my fingerings to make it feel more comfortable. 
Again, this is a little bit more of an advanced technique, so if your internal rhythms aren't that strong and you're still working on them, I would definitely practice this, but make sure you have your teacher listen to it so you're doing it properly, or record yourself and listen back to make sure you're doing it properly. It can be very easy to shift off of it. Even I've had to practice certain bits like that, so make sure to really focus in. If you need to accent some of the longer notes or lean into them so you know that they're really doing uh, what they need to do and in the location they need to be in, fine. Perfect. Do whatever you need to do. But this will be really, really useful for these passages. Not only the three measure noodley parts, but sometimes the shorter noodley parts as well. Just so you know, you know where your fingers need to be exactly where they need to go. Okay, so that's all we're going to discuss today about the canzona. Go home and practice and have fun with the noodley parts. <laughs>